everybody. I'm Freerider2142 and last time I made a little tip. Uh, I got great reviews on it, some questions, uh, and I decided to make some more of these. Uh, I'll make a lot of them in simple planes, however more advanced system-wise flying and things like that, uh, I will probably do it in DCS because it simulates helicopter rotors a uh, little more realistic than what uh, simple planes does. Today, I would like to talk to you about different rotor configurations. Uh, you have a single rotor configuration to the right here, a coaxial rotor system in the middle, and a tandem rotor system to the left. Now, I'm going to be talking about the differences in more uh, in the capabilities of these different rotor configurations, uh, because control-wise, they all pretty much control the same. Uh, they don't really differ from each other control-wise. Uh, some helicopters will have autopilots to correct from for them. Uh, a lot of coaxials do that. So you will have some buttons to allow you to correct for your heading and things like this. The, the helicopter can hold your heading and things like this. Uh, also in tandem rotor systems and also some single rotor systems. A lot of them actually have also auto hover and um, autopilot to do a lot of certain things to reduce uh, the amount the pilot needs to deal with when flying the helicopter because helicopters after all do require more attention than airplanes when flying. So what are the differences between these three configurations? Well I'm gonna start these engines up. I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna start these up now. As they, ro as they start up in slow motion you'll notice that in a single rotor configuration the rotor rotates one direction. So the main body of the helicopter is going to want to rotate to the other direction, which that's why you have a tail rotor. So you control yaw with your feet in a helicopter and in airplanes as well. So when a helicopter, when the roller rotor rotates counterclockwise like this, the whole body of the helicopter would want to rotate yaw to the or rotate clockwise and you're going to increase yaw to the left basically to make sure that the nose keeps from yawing to the right. Now in coaxial rotor systems right here in the middle you use two main rotors one on top of the other to cancel the torque of each other so you the helicopter doesn't really want to yaw in opposite direction of the rotor system. So how do you get yaw from that? Well, in helicopters like the Kamo, uh, they have a mechanical gearing system between the two main rotor shafts, and that increases or reduces the torque generated by one of the rotor blades. Basically speaking, I'm going to pause it right here. If the bottom rotor is rotating counterclockwise, the top rotor is cancelling that by rotating clockwise. So if I reduce the torque that the top rotor generates, the main body of the helicopter is going to want to yaw in the opposite direction to the bottom rotor. So in this case the bottom ro rotor rotates to the counterclockwise to the left. The main body of the helicopter would like to start pointing clockwise in this case to the right. It's pointing at us so it's a little off but basically pointing this way. Now in a tandem system that's a little different because you can't really slow one of the rotor systems down because if I'm gonna slow the front rotor system then the rear rotors, the rear blades are going to hit the front blades of the front rotors so that's not gonna work. Plus tandem rotor systems usually have a mechanical link between the front and the rear rotor blades uh, with a gearing with a drivetrain through it that prevents the rotors from ever coming into contact with each other. They will always rotate in the gaps between each other, basically. They will never hit each other. Uh, and also, if you lose engine power from the rear rotor, it will still get power from the front engines through that gear train, so you'll have still power to flight. 
So how do you get yaw from a system like this? Because, like I said, you can't really slow down. Well, you use the rolling element of the rotor blades. Basically, if I roll this to the left and this to the right, like this, then the front of the helicopter is going to yaw to the left and the rear is going to yaw to the right so it's going to start spinning in its place and that's how they induce yaw in tandem rotor systems now control wise they all control the same like i said uh, another big difference is in their lifting capabilities because this one has only one rotor this one will lift a lot more with two rotors and in a tandem it even increases because you're covering a larger surface with that lifting capability. So usually helicopters with tandem with a coaxial rotor system, sorry, will usually have the bonus of having a smaller rotor diameter and they can fit into smaller areas. Like the Ka 50, it's a little sneakier than other attack helicopters because it has a smaller rotor diameter. Tandem helicopters benefit from this as well, but for lifting capabilities, the Chinook, even though it's big, it doesn't have all that big of a rotor diameter. Uh, if you look at an Mi-26, which is one of the largest, well, the largest flying helicopter in the world, he has a massive rotor system because he only has one and seven blades on it, and that's a whole different thing. Well, so this is the basics of different uh, rotor configurations. I will go into rotor systems, uh, but like I said, I will do that in DCS probably. Also, I will take real realistic flying there because they simulate specific helicopters and to get something to fly very realistic here, it'll have to be extremely edited or with a lot of parts and it'll just lag like crazy. Uh, so I'll do that in DCS, some of these videos, but I really, really hope this helps you understand the helicopters. Uh, I really hope. Uh, that you enjoyed it as well. If you did, please leave a like. You can follow me also in Simple Planes at Freerider2142. Yeah, there's more stuff like this I will upload. Uh, and I'm sorry there is no flying in this one. This is more of a educational, I guess. But either way, you benefit from knowledge. Um, so have a good one, everybody. And we'll see you next time.